Good evening, I'm Lubukhan Sijake and welcome to Network. Tonight on the show, we continue to celebrate Women's Month by looking at some of the ladies that won the Women in Science Awards at this year's National Science Week that just took place last week. We also look at a blood donating mobile app made in Nigeria. And the city of Joburg is calling for developers to help solve the city's address issues. We will find out more about this in our discussion with Marcel Hatton, who is the director of corporate geoinformatics for the city of Johannesburg. You can follow us on at SABC Network on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. And it's news network at sabc.co.za on email. Now let's start with our social media and technology news. Women's participation in science and technology fields was one of the major issues talked about at this year's National Science Week. Take a look. One, two, three, four, five. The National Science Week wrapped up on Saturday with Minister of Science and Technology Naneri Pando emphasizing on the importance of science and engineering subjects. The, the real uh, uh, objective is to advance South Africa and Africa. Uh, in the sciences. We've got to do more maths. We have to have more engineers. We have to infuse technology in our society. We must grow our contribution to innovation. One of the winners of the Women in Science Awards, Professor Jane Catherine Gila, spoke on the significance of encouraging young girls living in rural areas to participate in science and technology subjects. What would actually um, uh, encourage um, uh, young girls in the rural areas so that they can be able to tr trust, um, start um, engaging in science, being comfortable in science and technology. Uh, for me, it is the exposure. Like I started by saying that the more, when I started using a cell phone, I was nervous because I didn't know how to use it. Uh, my first telephone to pick, I picked the telephone the other way around. Hello, and it is all over. So of course after that, you know, I started getting used to that. So we must allow our children uh, from the rural areas, because you know the children from the, you know, from the city, they have got this exposure because they see these things all the time. But the rural areas, I, I used to go to the garden. What is, apart from the plants, what else am I seeing there? Isn't, just, isn't it just awesome when women just do it for themselves? Now, finding blood for those in need will be easier with the Live Bank app in Nigeria. The app allows for hospitals to know which areas have the most blood stored. They will also know the blood types that are there so they can find it faster for patients that need it. In Nigeria, most collected blood comes from paid donors as there isn't a culture of voluntary blood donation. The problem is further compounded by the logistics required to store and move blood to the thousands who need blood daily. Now a new health startup called LifeBank is hoping to change that. They've created an app that can assist in the process to find, transport, deliver and store blood in hospitals. The app provides a database for blood banks and hospitals across the country, helping them source for the required blood type that pays patients may need. Blood bank uh, helps hospitals find the blood they need faster, cheaper and safer. Um, we have a database of all the blood available in a given place in Nigeria at any given time and we can deploy this information that we get through our tech platform to the hands of hospitals so that they know when they're in, in an emergency and they need blood for their patient, they come to us and we help them find the blood they need faster. Every year, hundreds of accident victims, pregnant women, patients suffering from sickle cell anemia and cancer, among other conditions, die in Nigerian hospitals because of shortage of blood. An estimated 1.7 million units of blood in the country is needed yearly to prevent blood-related deaths. The National Blood Transfusion Service of Nigeria says it recorded less than 500,000 units in 2014. That's less than a third of what's needed. The LifeBank app is believed to be needed help. I realized that it will go a long way in order to help our profession, you know, because, you know, I've been to abroad, I've been in the U.S., in London, in Germany, all these kind of things. And then I've seen the way of their pra practice, you know, by then. Then and by the time they came in, and I have been like, look, this is the kind of, of people that we need in Nigeria eh, and nowadays. Because with the with the level of innovation, you know, how to do with all this uh, all this modern day 
blood banking now, which I believe that it will go a long way in order to help our profession. Medical staff says the app will help make the blood donation process more efficient. When we have emergencies, emergencies before, we are as a gynecologist, patients come late in the night, 2 a.m., placenta previous, abruptural placentas, they bleed, and it's always a challenge getting blood that late in the night. But we thank God for the services of Life Bank, which is 24 hours. We have experienced it. Call them any time of the day. We are getting services from them. In just two months after being set up, Life Bank already has 15 hospitals and 30 registered blood banks across Lagos and its environs. Hmm. It seems we'll be soon having a Tinder for blood types. Now, as the world becomes more digital, young children in Ekuruleni are learning the language of computers. The city is offering free training in coding. From developing apps to games and websites, the future is at our fingertips. And these kids are feeling the pulse of this digital world, coding. Like many her age, Bronwyn Kutsia lives on her phone, but it's always been her dream to understand how it works. I decided to do this course because I would like to learn more things about technology. I would like to inspire young kids to do things that would also promote us out in the world globally. These computer wizards are getting a head start and hope to pioneer development. I like to be a computer geek and you know, I know coding and how to make programs by myself. You know. I would design a platform for younger kids between the ages of 3 and 2 that would teach them like a personal tutor. I would like to create an app to help children with their homework and things like that. The city of Ikuraleni is planning to expand the training. So there's a pilot uh, project where we started with only two libraries, Germiston and Katlehong. It's a three months um, long session where they will come every Saturday for three hours. They'll be learning how to code. The beauty about this is we're not only doing this ourselves, we are partnering with small IT companies that are playing a mentorship role. An initiative to get youngsters to become more innovative and competitive. Hasina Gori, SABC News, Germiston. Delta Airlines experienced some computer glitches that caused major problems for both passengers and the airline worldwide. The launch of Pokemon Go in Taiwan is getting some motorists in trouble with the law. These are some of the tech stories that made headlines in the past week. Delta Airlines Inc. experienced what it called a major system-wide network outage on Monday which delayed flights worldwide. Though travel slowly returned to normal, the airline still had to cancel some flights, news that some passengers didn't take too kindly. It's very, very, very frustrating because, you know, it's been so many hours that we've been going through this. I've never had an experience like this in all my life with flying. Never had one. Now moving over to Germany. A Berlin startup has launched a new travel service it claims is cheap as a bus and comfortable as a limousine. Urban mobility company Door to Door is piloting Alligator Shuttle, a taxi sharing service that promises to take its users to their destination for 10 euro cents per kilometer. Well, generally it's for everyone who has a transportation demand and who is not 100% satisfied with what the classic public transit has to offer. Because you have to change trains too often or it just takes too long or you have to carry something. Now on we go to England. A new computer game created by a team of 15 people in a shed in southern England made its highly anticipated debut this week after creating a buzz for conjuring a mind-bogglingly large universe of 18 quintillion planets for players to explore. So No Man's Sky is a high-level concept, is a game where we use the computer or the PlayStation 4 to generate a whole universe. And then we start every player out with a spaceship at the outside edge of that universe. In the game, players have spaceships and can be explorers, traders or fighters and try to survive on sometimes hostile planets within 24 hours of going live. Speaking of gaming, 
the release of Nintendo's Pokemon Go in Taiwan has seen a rise in traffic violations with commuters using smartphones to play the game while driving. I'm working and have to go to another place for an assignment. So I stopped while driving because there was a red traffic light to catch some, catch some Pokemon. Police are stepping up efforts to counter this development. Now after the break, we talk to Marcel Hatton from the city of Johannesburg about the Geo Josie Challenge. Stay tuned. Do you need a funeral policy? Joy is found in the little things. Kyo pidisa. Hufepa luhudisa. Uguba ibona uvela wetuwa la loko ungenzega. And being there when one journey ends and another begins. And it's your funny claim to me, guys. Life is the gift of growing new memories each day. So that our loved ones can preserve them after we are no longer here. Life is a gift to us. Life is a gift to us. Since 1918, AFBOB has comforted and supported South African families in their time of need. Protecting their loved ones' memories with respect and dignity. Plus, committed and trusted funeral representatives with more than 250 branches nationwide. There for you, every hour of every day. Avbo provides a complete funeral service solution for everyone, even if you're not an Avbo policyholder. Make sure your family comes first. Always. Avbo, we're here for you. If you would like Avbob to call you about a new policy, SMS family and your name to 41790. Now, an ad, welcome back. An address system that labels every three meters squared area on Earth with three words is bringing sense to one of Rio's favelas and helping Olympics visitors find their way. Rio's largest favela is just an empty space according to many normal maps. Over 70,000 residents in Hosina don't have an official address and the Brazilian post office won't deliver here. But thanks to this app, residents can have their own unique three-word address. A local delivery service is now using it to get people their packages. London-based company What Three Words has divided the world into 57 trillion three by three meter squares. Every one of these squares has a unique three-word address. So, for example, the face of the Sphinx at Giza in Egypt is at Foiled Policy Blueberry. What three words says it's more precise and simpler than regular addresses or coordinates, giving people in developing countries a fixed address for the first time. They've now partnered with Olympics organizers to help visitors get around during the Games. We're in an app called Rio Go, which is one of the official apps to actually get people around Rio so they can plan their transport routes. And you can type your three word address straight into that app and it'll get you there. If, say, you wanted to meet next to Stand 102 at the Olympic Stadium, you'd simply type Gliders Blizzard Pickle into the What Three Words app. So somebody would get the What Three Words app, they would find the three word address where they wanted to talk about, you know, that precise entrance to the stadium that you're going to meet. Um, what they would then do is give you the, the three words, and then you simply type the three words into the Rio Go app. It's like, this is where I want to go. And it will then route you there using the best public transport to exactly that three-meter entrance to the site. 
What three words hopes their precise and simple system can keep fans on track and ahead of the games. The city of Joburg is calling on young developers to participate in the Geo Josie Developer Challenge that is aimed at helping the city to improve the system of allocating and maintaining addresses. Joining us in studio to give us more details on this is Marcel Hattin, Director of Corporate Geoinformatics for the city of Johannesburg. Hello and welcome to Network. Good evening, so, Oh, nice, nice to have you here. Listen, so but the insight that we just saw Marcel would that be a sort of a, a kind of solution that you guys are aiming at yes that might well be a solution I think it's important that we also realize that we need to have local we need to have local solutions for local challenges so even though it is a global solution we might be looking at something that is customized to look at our our specific addresses okay so for that reason and in the in the context of the city of Johannesburg's commitment to become a smart city we looking at constantly improving what we are doing we asking the question can we improve how can we work smarter and also how can we embrace technology so that's why we started with the GeoJosie developer challenge mm -hmm. It is the first time that it is run. It is run by the city of Johannesburg in partnership with the Wits University and ESRI South Africa. And it is open for young and upcoming developers, 30 years and younger, who reside in Johannesburg. So the focus is really on the local context. Okay, you say, I'm sorry to cut you, but you, you tell me about age restrictions. Why 30 years and younger? And what if, I mean, there's an older developer that is interested in developing yes. this kind of app? We really believe in the youth, the energy, the context in which they live, and they are the future. So we really want to give them the opportunity to, to make a difference and um, then to develop their ideas for possible implementation in the city. So if we look at, again, why it is important to have an address, an address indicates location. It is a point of service delivery. We're looking at services like water, electricity and refuse collection and an address can save a life in the case of an emergency for an ambulance they need to reach a specific address okay. and we know with the voting process what happened it is very important to actually have an okay. address so when did this uh, this challenge start when did the initiative come about and when when is it starting yes. exactly it actually started two years ago already so it we really had to look at the theme and we realize that the theme of an address is very, very relevant and it should <coughs> make a difference in the city. Um, and we're asking developers to look at that and to see where they can actually assist the city and the community to improve improve life mm. in the city. Mm. Yes. Now Marcel, I mean a lot of people already use your apps such as Google Maps and we would think that Google, I mean obviously it updates uh, on a regular basis and people think that it has it on lockdown, it has our, all our addresses on lockdown. So what, how different is GeoJosie uh, gonna be um, yes. from Google? So that is what we're asking young developers to tell us what exciting new solutions or apps can be developed. They can re-engineer re the existing processes, for instance. They can decide that it is better to implement crowdsourcing than to have field workers going out into the field to collect information. They can also decide that instead of having uh, penalties, um, rather work on awards for people who actually do display do display the apps. Yes. They can build in gamification. I mean, we know what Pokemon has done to the world, so wouldn't that be fun? That is very true. So, but um, how do people that are interested enter such a, a challenge? Yes. It's actually very easy to enter, but first I think I need to say why they should enter. There's 300,000 rand worth of prizes to be won. There's a five-day training involved on app development and also location-based um, technology. And um, yes, do go to our website. The website is geojosie.joburg. That is G-E-O-J-O-Z-I dot Joburg. It's very easy and simple to enter. Complete the registration form by the 31st of August 
and then you can attend a briefing se session for more questions and answers and the winners will then be announced <coughs> by the middle of November um, to coincide with the International GIS Day. Okay, you guys are talking about this uh, initiative here on SABC. Obviously, this is a very great platform to talk about such things. But where, what, which other platforms have you been on to, to make sure that the information goes out there? Because what we've seen here is a lot of uh, information locked down. Not a lot of these developers know about such in initiatives and such uh, opportunities. Yes. Exactly. That's why we're targeting universities. Um, directly we know of specific departments and that's why we're working in partnership with the University of Witz as well but other universities so that we can actually reach that target audience. Okay that was Marcel Hutton from the city of Joburg. Thank you so much for being with us. Now for those that are interested in taking part in the GeoJosie challenge we will definitely have more information on our Twitter and our Facebook page which is at SABC Network so make sure uh, to keep an eye out. This week, we caught up with actor and model Joe Gazadi. He told us what his favorite piece of technology is. Hi, my name is Joe Gazadi, and I'm an actor slash producer model. My favorite part of technology must be the iPhone 6 because it helped me, um, you know, take better pictures for Instagram, connect more with my fans, people that follow me for my fitness instructions, you know, videos, and uh, the quality of the image is beautiful. You know, if you got the beautiful, if you got the right edit. <laughs> so yeah. From the moment you start your day. My biggest question is how I got myself here on time. Yeah. <laughs> this is so early for a comedian, I've got to be honest. We are there for you. We bring your morning into perspective. As news breaks throughout the morning. It's an investment into the future of the airports company, but also the future of our children, the future of our country, the future of the transport sector. We'll make sure that you get the full story. Give us quality music. Load shedding. Listen, this winter. It's a thing of the past. And you can count on the weather team with expertise. Join us live at 6 a.m. daily. Welcome back. Here's what some people have been sharing on social media. In South Africa, many people have been celebrating with long jump Olympic silver medalist Luvo Manyonga. He has become South Africa's sixth medalist at the Olympics. He has been trending on Twitter. More South Africans on social media have been showing their support for Kesta Semenya. This is after many overseas have been questioning the runner's eligibility to compete at the Olympics. Semenya has been on great form lately. The Zambian elections have also been a big chatting point. Vote counting has been slow. Well, that's all we have for you this week. But catch me again next week, same time here on SABC News Channel 404. Remember, we are on at SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And it's News Network at sabc.co.za. We leave you with a video of a drone racing championship held in, Stro in Australia. From me and the rest of the network team, buenos noches, muchachos.